for me, you know, when I might look at somebody like that and say, hey, here's a kind of an expert opinion, 30-year pilot, um, I, I certainly don't look at him that way anymore. I mean, that, that's, he no longer is uh, giving his expert opinion. He's just fanboying all out. And we, we can notice this because, you know, they'll say things like um, recently he showed that the Equinox, uh, you know, and he says that proves a ball earth. But, you know, uh, we know what the problem is with just uh, triangulating the sun. So why is it okay to use the angles to the sun when it works in your favor, but not when it goes completely against? You know, I mean, wh why do we get to... And that's what they don't understand is you just pick and choose. He says, well, flat earthers, why don't you go out and do experiments? There's another plane going underneath this one. Why don't you go out and do experiments like I do? Well, when he does experiments, he just goes exactly to whatever Wikipedia says to do, and he goes and does it. And what do you think is going to happen? Of course, it's not going to be that you're going to find a lie that way. So these guys don't even understand that... Um, it becomes useless for me to talk to them. I call them Wikipedians. Because if I want to know what Wolfie believes or what his experiments will prove, I simply need to go to Wikipedia. Because every experiment that he ever shows on his YouTube channel will forever, always, absolutely, 100% show what Wikipedia says. That's the point of his channel. I mean, that's the point of Red's Rhetoric. When yes. they go out and, yeah, <clears throat> they'll, they'll never show you. So why would you watch anything like that? Why would you even care? And originally I did. I, when I saw people doing experiments like this, I said, well, I want to watch these experiments. But I quickly realized people like Soundly, people like uh, Slice Parkane, they're not looking for the truth. They're looking to reconfirm what they already believe to be the truth. That's a big difference. And so, yeah, the, the North Star is a really, really excellent proof that uh, the, the globe Earth model is wrong. And, you know, technically, you could, you could triangulate, you know, based on your latitude, assuming a spherical Earth, you could triangulate on Polaris, um, you know, from dusk until dawn. Uh, and I don't think it would come out to be, what, 25 quadrillion miles or whatever. It actually comes out to the same as the sun, 3590 something, or Bob, you know the number. 3415.9, 3415.9 miles. Right. So that's if you're, you know, triangulating uh, even Polaris. So again, I, I don't get how um, when you add the curvature of the Earth, it becomes 93 million. If you're talking about the sun, that makes no sense. Basically, what we're saying is if you take two places on the same um, longitude and you take the uh, North Star here, which we know is at 90 degrees, well, you can triangulate if you know the distance from here to here, um, which you can figure out. So you can figure out that distance from the North Pole, and then you, let's say that distance is whatever, and then you can get the angle that you're looking at the North Star from your location and triangulate it. Well, that comes out, whether you're looking at the sun or the pole star, either way it would work. Um, and when you do that, it comes out to about 3,500 miles. And then all of a sudden, for some strange reason, if you add a curvature like this instead, now all of a sudden it's 93 million miles. Um, you know, somebody needs to explain that to me because it doesn't make any sense. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back also to another blast from the past, and I'm going to play a video uh, by uh, a guy named TJ. And TJ, uh, his channel is Smokescreen Design, and many of you may remember TJ uh, as being one of the original Globebusters many, many, many moons ago. And uh, TJ made a video a long time ago that I have referenced on several occasions. Um, and But I think that you really, you know, TJ's video, you really don't get the beauty of it unless you actually hear and see what TJ is saying in this. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to play uh, part of this video. And uh, I'm going to tell you right now, first of all, a little, little language warning because uh, TJ is not going to be our only instructor in this. Uh, we're also going to have a guest instructor by the name of Red's Rhetoric. And Red's Rhetoric, as you know, is a little bit of a potty mouth. So there's, a co you know, cover, cover your ears on a couple of this. It's not too bad. Um, but uh, it's something that um, I think that, you know, this video really makes a profound demonstration. And this is where we're going to start off um, after we play this video with uh, explaining why it is important to look at our own observations, things that, that are actually real and, and empirical and observable, right? Um, you know, kind of like, you know, a long time ago when, when we were talking about, you know, pilots and what they see and what they do and the fact that, you know, we as flat earthers, and I've said this and other flat earther pilots have said this, um, Chris is a pilot also, we never, ever, ever have to push the nose of that plane down to compensate for any curvature of the earth. Well, 
so what what we get as a rebuttal for that, of course, is is the ballers bringing their model into it, you know, their gravity, you know, saying, well, you never have to do that because gravity does that automatically for you, um, regardless of the fact that none of the instrumentation ever picks it up. Um, they then try and debunk gyroscopes, which are very straightforward, very plain, you know, and they try and convolute right. the whole thing. Go ahead, John. Because I would just... I would just interrupt you real quickly and say if gravity was doing all that, then we would never would have needed gyroscopes, right? <laughs> exactly. That is exactly yeah. right. And that was one of the points that we made um, on the episode a while back called Mathematics, Pilots, and Planes, Oh My, uh, where we kind of went through the Wolfie 6020 model and uh, kind of ripped it a new one. Um, so... Anyway, so this is just one thing that I really think it's important because TJ did a great job on this video, and I will kind of set the stage by telling you that, that Jaron and Reg Rhetoric had been in um, one of their many debates a long time ago, and of course, you know, Red being the person that he is, you know, came out with a video and said, well, yeah, Jaron said the that the uh, moon is only about 3,000 miles up. Where did he get that? He must have pulled it out of his rear end, yada, yada, yada. Uh, so then he proceeds to go through um, the heliocentric observable model, right, and prove unequivocally in his eyes that the moon is 224 or 230,000 miles away, whatever it is, um, you know, simply by using a trigonometry. And he makes his point and everything, but then TJ kind of elaborates on that. And and so what TJ does is he takes the part out of uh, Red's model uh, that is simply unobservable. Uh, and that would be the curvature. And the curvature, of course, would rep represent the parallax in the equation. Um, so that's the thing we cannot we have never observed curvature we have never measured curvature so why on god's green earth are we trying to allow them to dictate their model to us use their trigonometry using their curvature and then beyond that we're going to go uh, after the video is over we're going to touch on something that's going to kind of blow their own model away using their own trigonometry model and uh so again this is what i want to start pointing out so everybody um take a, uh, a relax for a minute. Uh, Jaron, there is a, a link that uh, Mike has uh, presented in the uh, inside chat, the Skype chat for you to look at. I know you've seen this video before, so you may want to look at it while we are watching this video. Um, so uh, this is going to be about six or seven minutes, but as I said, this is going to be kind of a TJ and Reg rhetoric uh, being our instructors for the day. And uh, I would advise everybody to pay very close attention to this because this is important and this is why I have referenced this video so many times uh, on this. So here we go, guys. We can find the moon's distance from the Earth is by using parallax. Parallax is why nearby objects appear to move more than farther ones when moving perpendicular to your line of sight with the object. And using parallax to find out how far something is is nothing more than trigonometry. If you wish to find out how far away something is, all you have to do is follow this formula, and we will use this formula to find out how far away the moon is from the Earth. Now the way we're going to do this is that YouTube user Jade, aka Turkey Cat Turkey Cat, who's located in California, will be measuring the angle at which she sees the moon relative to the horizon. She will do this edge on with my location in Florida, and I will do the same while being edge on with her location in California. However, the first thing we need to do is find the distance between us. Lucky for us, the distance between us is known by, you guessed it, using the fucking ruler tool on Google Earth. With that, we now have the value of D, which is 2,351.81 miles. Okay, so we need to take this 2,351.81, 2,351.81. Okay, 2,351.81. Okay, so just round it up to 82. Now what we need is the angle at which we both see the moon. And here are the results. Jade makes her measurements and finds the moon to be 55.4 degrees from the horizon. Okay. She sees the moon at 55.4. I'm going to put that right here, and I'm going to show you why in a little bit. These measurements were done when I found the moon to be directly overhead at 90 degrees, edge on with Jade's location in California. Okay, so his is 90 degrees. So we've got degree number 190, and we've got her degree 55.4. So let's keep going. With these values now accounted for, there is one more thing we need to take into consideration. The curvature of the Earth. Yes, that same curve that made the ship disappear from our line. By the way, I did a video on this ship. This is complete horse shit. 
Red's rhetoric. I can't believe you got fooled by this dumbass video. This fight. Oh my gosh, this video fakes so many people. Just watch my video on the, the ancient ship and just whatever. This doesn't prove nothing. Seen previously. You see, as you get further away from a point on the Earth, the more deviation you will get in your visual angles. For example, if Jade were to look straight up in California, and I were to do the same in Florida, we would not be looking in the same direction. There is a deviation there caused by the curvature of the Earth. How do we correct for this? Simple. A complete circle is 360 degrees. So, if we divide the circumference of the Earth by 360, we will get 69.169 miles per degree of change. Now, if we take the distance between our two observers and divide it by that number, the miles per degree of change, we find that our visual degree difference is 34 degrees. So what this means is that we will need to add 34 degrees to Jade's measurements in order to offset the difference. Okay, so we need to offset the difference for the curvature of the Earth. So we're going to look at two ways. One is the Earth is flat. Doesn't mean a pancake. You look with your eyes, you see that there are dimensions up and down to the Earth. We need to make note here for curvature of the Earth, and we're going to do that. But what if the Earth is flat? If it's flat, then we don't need to do this. So we're going to see what the two differences. Remember, Jaronism said it's only about 3,000 miles away. And this guy says it's horseshit. If you use trigonometry, you'll see that is wrong. So let's find out. Which, when we do the simple math, gives us a new value for Jade's observations. That new. So now Jade's observation, which she saw was 55.4, right? 55.4. Like, nope, sorry, the Earth is curved. We got to add 89.4 degrees, so we have to make it to where I'm at 90 degrees and you're at 90 degrees, shy of 0.6. Let's keep going. Value is 89.4 degrees. This means we can now find our parallax. Now, the inner angles of any triangle will always equal 180 degrees. So, okay, so he brings us up that the angles in a triangle will up, um, add up to 180 degrees. So here we have angle one, um, my formula up here up top. Let me pull this down a little bit. So you see that there's no formula in this box. Next box, no formula. And then this box, what I'm doing is we're taking 180 minus C26, which is this first angle, and then C27, which is the next angle. And it's going to give us the, um, the third degree, which is not masonry, but it's the third degree of the, of the angle. So it's going to do this subtraction for us. Now what also is going to happen down here we have um, more of the formula so c25 so it's going to take the distance which is c25 right here and then it's going to take the tangent and the parallax and it's going to give us the miles so we're going to see that here in a little bit well, we simply minus the total degrees we observed from 180 degrees which gives us a parallax value of zero Okay, 0 0.6. Let's get that over here. 0 0.6 is what he says, but it's actually 89.4. So what I'm going to do is put in 89.4 here. So these are the two degrees we're going to play with. 0.6 degrees. And finally, we now have everything we need for our equation to solve for x. So X will represent the distance from the moon to my location in Florida. So we simply plug in the values where they belong, crunch them out, and what do you fucking know? We found that the moon is 224,573.102 miles from my front door. Okay, so it's 224,573 2, miles. Okay, so let's see what we get. Uh, let's plug in 89.4 because we had to account for Earth's curvature, and I forgot that I, there we go. Um, so we have to account for Earth's curvature, which gives us a parallax of 0 0.6, which makes this 224,573.1, is that right? 224,573? 224,573.1. Okay, so this formula works. But what if the Earth is flat and we put in 55.4? for this degree. We go back to her original degree that she had because we say, all right, what if the Earth is flat? That's what Jainism says. Oh, wait a second. Now the moon is 3,409.143 miles away. Hmm. So let me just ask you a question. Does the moon look like it is 3,409 miles away? Or do you think it looks like it's 224 and a half 
thousand miles away. Now that is the question, isn't it? <laughs> All right. So what TJ has done here is he's uh, taken Red Rhetoric's math, you know, and Red Rhetoric is a is a rather famous ball earth figure um, uh, for whatever reason. But uh, you know, Red Rhetoric, you know, used his math and really thought that uh, he. Uh, disproved Jaren in every way, shape, and form. But you notice that ultimately he had to figure in that curvature of the Earth and that uh, 55 degrees or whatever it was, or 34 degrees, uh, that gave him the uh, 0.6 degree uh, of parallax um, was added in. Now, it was added in, but mind you, once again, we have never, ever been able to observe this curvature. We have never ever been able to measure this curvature. So what we have been duped into doing is using this uh, this globe Earth, you know, a heliocentric spherical model math into into determining what the alleged distance to the moon is. Well, so if we just stick to um, you know observable facts and quit making things up that are complete fantasy, like curvature of the Earth. Well, then Jaron was right in the first place, wasn't he? It comes up to be uh, 3,409 miles um, between uh, to the from Red Rhetoric's uh, front door to the moon. And, of course, this is very similar to the 3,415.9 miles that I have come up with, uh, but we're not going to quibble over a couple of miles. Um, and it also agrees with uh, the throw of an object uh, as light. Um, if it, w it would have to be 3,415 miles essentially, or 3,400 miles essentially above the Earth to be able to have a forward throw of light of 6,225 miles. And also, uh, if you're going in the other direction, it would have to uh, throw necessarily 6,225 in the opposite direction, which gives us um, uh, 12,000. 200 and uh, 450 miles basically half the circumference of the earth okay so isn't that amazing how that really works out it works out in observable phenomenon it works out in trigonometry and it works out with distance to the horizon and and light throw that is required um, to be able to light up half of the earth at a time Okay, and you know, there's some other variables in there, but suffice it to say that unless we start adding in fantasy variables that, that simply have no basis in observable reality, um, Red's rhetoric's formula falls apart. So this is what I'm talking about, guys, when I ask the question, why are we, um, why are we, or why are we playing by their rules, right? Uh, it doesn't make any sense, and we fall into that trap quite often. All, all the things that, that we're being taught uh, at university and in school, high school, junior high school, elementary, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, anybody that's been to school knows certainly that what school is really about, it's not, they don't teach you about critical thinking. Um, they teach you basically how to replicate and repeat things. In other words, um, this formula that read just did you know this is part of, of trigonometry training well this is the formula this is how you have to do this and of course in order to do this you have to take the parallax um, of the earth in because obviously there's going to be a distinct angle change they tell us um, f between Florida and California again we can't measure it no matter what we do we can't observe it every experiment to ever do so has failed um, and, you know, instead what we get is ridiculous stories like, you know, the ship over the horizon arguments, yada, yada, yada. It goes on and on and on. And this is how they bolster this argument. But again, remember, these credentials come, basically, you get your degree by being able to regurgitate back what you have been taught verbatim. Um, and if you don't do so or you rock the boat, then you fail. So that's, that's kind of the thing. So what I want to do then is let's just take this a step further. And let's keep it in the realm of observation, all right? And let's just say Red's rhetoric was right, okay, and there is this uh, 0.6 degree of parallax um, on the Earth. And let's take, and since we have the sun and the moon in the sky, and they are both, of course, the same apparent size, we can do that very, very same trigonometry on the sun. Absolutely we can. And if we were to do that, what do you suppose is going to happen if we uh, did that trigonometry on the sun between uh, 
California and Florida? Well, I can tell you what it's going to come out to be. It's going to come out using red zone formula and observation um, measuring angles to the sun. It's going to come back showing that the sun is also 224,000 miles up. Whoops. Yes. That's a problem. Yes. <laughs> that so, is, that, that's th what you just said is something that can be taken to any mathematician and and just put to them say look this is the situation this is the basis for why you think you're on a globe and um, uh, you can't have 93 million miles and 234,000 100,000 you know you can't and well like you just said the equation that says one distance for one thing is the same equation for the distance for the other thing you know and it's the same uh, degrees arc anyway yeah. so it is definitely yeah both same distance Yes, absolutely. So that's, you know, and, and that, of course, is using their own formulas, their own observation, their own trigonometry. And, of course, if we modify it um, and take that parallax value out and make the Earth flat again, what do we get? Well, we're going to get the sun also is at 3,400 miles, which is exactly what the flat earthers have been saying. Uh, starting with Eratosthenes and including Robotham, all this triangulation was done in complete um, uh, ignorance, for lack of a better word, of the atmosphere or the atmos plane and how that affects light waves incoming from the celestial areas. And we know pretty, pretty damn well, 100%, that refraction is causing um, not just perspective, uh, is causing the sun and moon and stars to rise and set. And so just now, as of 2017, are people starting to model these things and, and take these triangulations and factor in the uh, atmosphere, which does behave as a subjective convex lens. And um, at this point in the game, we just don't know what the sun and moon are. We don't know how distant they are. We can make assumptions and we can draw assumptions based on triangulation. And that's great. You know, we've had these values since the late 1800s or the mid 1800s when Parallax did them. Um, but when, you know, they're totally failing to factor in the, I believe one of the biggest variables, which is that of the atmosphere, um, right. then we're left, right. you know, we, we still have some more digging to do. I don't think we can just settle on that, uh, angular size and distance to the sun and moon. I was just gonna say, I don't think anybody's saying that. And if they are, then I missed that. But, you know, we're, ba he, he's basically showing you that, um, you know, the way that Red's rhetoric is doing it, that you can come out with different values. That, like you said, John, are the ones that match the ones we've had since the 1800s. John, I totally get where you're coming from, um, because there are obviously other factors. But unfortunately, until we figure out how to quantize those other factors um, and then fit them into our own calculations, um, it, you know, we're kind of left at the mercy of, of making strictly uh, simple observations. Now, the reason that I think that that 3,400 miles is probably a pretty good figure, and like I said, I've stated this a million times, is because it, it, it pans out when you are doing a distance to the horizon uh, and you get that 6225 in each direction. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't some other factor that could be greatly distorting that, um, but we don't know how to quantize that. We don't know how to measure it, and we don't know exactly how to determine what that is. So, yes, that's going to cause some problems, um, but... Well, uh, if we had a budget like NASA, we could send up three very high budget, even if they were $50,000 apiece weather balloons, and do some triangulations at really great distances from above the tropis plane, and I think that would give us a tremendous amount of data. But instead, you know, we shovel $52 million a day at NASA so they can lie to us and make frickin' ridiculous videos.